Today we are talking about spiritual myths that can keep us stuck in toxic relationships. So in my opinion, there are some dangerous spiritual teachings out there. Not dangerous in the sense that like they're going to kill you, although in some cases they might if you're stuck in an abusive relationship, but dangerous as far as they can keep us in toxic relationships. How do I know this? Because that was the case for me. I was very into spirituality. I, I have been on a path of awakening for almost 10 years now. And at different points in time, I was kind of disoriented by some of the spiritual teachings out there, and they did keep me in situations longer than I might otherwise have. So that's what we're going to be busting today. I'm going to be busting these myths, the ones that you guys said specifically were confusing you. And I'm going to let you know what's true and what's not so that you don't get stuck in these toxic relationships any more than you need to. So one of the first ones that one of you mentioned confusing you, and actually I've seen it a lot. Like, so I'm, I'm, I'm always scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through Facebook, and all the time I just see some of these teachings pop up. And you might not even realize that these are spiritual teachings, but I, like, I can recognize them because I've, I've been doing this for a while and I've been on that journey for a while. So the one that comes up a lot is everything is within. Everything is within. So what we can then do when we hear that teaching, because basically what, what that teaching is, is saying is that everything is within you. All the things that you need are within you and you don't need to get it from anywhere else. You don't need to get it from other people. Just turn within. It's all within yourself. And so the natural place we can then go is to think, well, okay, maybe I don't actually need a relationship. Maybe I actually don't need other people. Or the most destructive place we can go with this, in my opinion, is, well, if everything is within, then maybe I should just tolerate this person not really showing up for me or not treating me well. Because I'm not supposed to need anything, right? Everything is within, so I should just put up with this. I should just tolerate this. So here's, here's the truth about this teaching. It's actually an incomplete teaching. What this teaching should say is everything emotionally is within and, 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 and we still need to rely on other people to get our physical needs met. This being said, this is not also the, the complete story here. So I'm, I'm gonna really go into depth on this one here because it's an important distinction to, to understand here. So if we go all the way on our spiritual journey, which means complete enlightenment, we are dissolving our ego here, you will eventually get to the place where, yeah, you don't need much, if anything at all, emotionally from other people. But all of these things here, there's going to be a lot of buts here. I'm going to say but a lot in, in this video. But... The, to get to this place, to get to this place where you don't have any emotional needs from anyone else is extremely difficult. It's really intense. And I personally, I only know like one or two people who have gotten to this point. It's so rare and it's so difficult. It's basically just a, a journey of pain and anxiety and fear. And you got to be like really, really hardcore about your healing and awakening. So the point here that I'm trying to make is that it is that getting to that place where you don't have any emotional needs from anyone or any, any people around you, it's not necessary to live a happy and healthy life. It's not really what I teach here. If like, it's one thing if your goal is to have complete spiritual awakening, to, to completely heal and have no wounds, to completely dissolve your ego, okay, fine. We can, we can talk about how everything you need is within. But that's not, the, the, that's not what I'm teaching here. And it's not necessary to have a healthy relationship. So the people that I know who have gone this far to the point where they don't actually need any emotional support from people around them, the interesting thing about them is they're actually married. <laughs> they're in relationships and they're in healthy relationships. So that tells you something there. 
This teaching that everything is within, I actually think that this, this teaching, it's not very helpful for people. It's, you know, whether it's given as spiritual advice or relationship advice, again, if you're talking to an authentic spiritual teacher who has gone on the journey and you want to get to that place too, you want to be completely enlightened, then again, that's one thing. But this advice is not helpful for most of us because we're not going there. We're not going to that place. We're not, we're not extreme in our spirituality where we need to get to the place where we're not relying on people for emotional support. The danger in this teaching is that, again, like I talked about in the beginning, we can tend to minimize our very real needs for emotional support. The teacher that I had, who is at that place where he doesn't need any emotional support from anyone, yet is still in a relationship, he would tell me along the journey, because I would hear stuff like this, and I would think, well, okay, you know what, yeah, like maybe I should just, maybe I should just isolate myself, because I, I was really, really intense in my spirituality, and I did want the real deal. I wanted full awakening. Even then, he was not giving me this advice that everything is within. What, what he said was, yeah, that's true, but until you get to that point, get a lot of support. Get emotional support from people. Talk to people, be in relationships. Basically, follow your heart, do what you want. So keep that in mind also. This advice is not relevant unless you're at the very, very end of that journey. And you guys, most of us, we're not gonna get there and we don't want, we don't need to. It's, it's, not, it's not something we need to do to have healthy relationships. So here's the thing. Even people who are fully enlightened, who are at the end of that journey, who are in that place of, yeah, like, I actually don't need anything emotionally from other people, they still need other people to get their physical needs met. Enlightened people are not sitting there manifesting food and stuff like that. They have to go to the grocery store. So we, we are actually, even if you're fully enlightened, we are actually dependent on other people to get our needs met. We could say, okay, if you're, maybe you're out there off the grid and you're, you're growing your own food or something like that, but even in that case, you're still dependent on other things. You're dependent on plants or animals, whatever the case is. So again, this teaching is incomplete in many ways. One of the ways that is also incomplete is because it leaves out this important piece of a healing journey, of a spiritual awakening journey, which is self-love. I'm always talking about this, self-love, self-love. Because when you are at the end of the journey, when you are at maximum awakening, when you are fully enlightened, you completely love yourself. You completely love other people, which in the way I talk about it in the terms of spiritual awakening means acceptance. You completely accept other people and you also completely love and accept yourself. So, so when you love yourself. So, so basically to give you some context here, what spiritual awakening is, is you're going on a healing journey where you are slowly, slowly, slowly dissolving your ego. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And what is left over at the end of that is love. It's acceptance. It's not that high of like, like the infatuation love. It's just simply acceptance. Now, when I talk about love and acceptance in the context of spiritual awakening, it goes both ways. So when you love other people, you also love yourself. But when you get to the place of complete self-love, you actually don't tolerate people not treating you well. So I'm gonna give, give an example of my teacher, and this is what I learned from him. So my teacher, who was at the end of this journey, fully awakened, he was incredibly compassionate. Tremendous amount of compassion accepted everyone, knew where they were coming from because he had been there himself, and he had excellent boundaries. Excellent boundaries. So like, for example, he had this, he had this forum where you could just go on and ask him questions and he would answer the questions. This was all for free, so it wasn't like he was getting paid for this, but he would answer questions basically when he felt like it and when he didn't feel like it, he wouldn't answer those questions. So like I would ask questions and he sometimes wouldn't get back to me for weeks because his priority was taking care of himself because he loved himself to the maximum. 
He loved all of us. He cared about us, but not to the detriment of himself. He also loved himself, so he balanced those two, those two aspects. So if you are, again, this is an incomplete teaching that everything is within us, because if you are at that point, and, and the tendency when we hear this teaching is to say, well, okay, I'm just gonna, I just need to deny my needs because everything is within me. That's not the full story here. When you get to that place where everything is truly within you, you don't deny your own needs. You're actually, you're not gonna tolerate people who are showing up in your life who don't treat you well or who even abuse you. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button because I come out with new videos every week. If you're looking for daily support and inspiration, you can find me over on Instagram at livingfreefindinglove. And if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one support, go to my website at livingfreehealing.us.